what's good, everybody? Happy March. You know, it is the first show in March, so we are now like ending out or getting to into the end of the first quarter. You know what I mean? And um, for everybody that know the different quarters in business or in hip hop is or business period is four quarters in a year, which is three months apiece. And we're now in March, so we're ending the first quarter and going into the second. So um, shout out to everybody that got a lot of things accomplished in the top of the year because everybody was like, oh, new year, new me, or this year's mine, and <laughs> next year I'm going to really do my thing. So if you really was doing shit in these first two months into the third month, then salute to you, you know what I mean? Hand claps to that. Yeah. Make sure you file those taxes. Yeah. See, there you go. That's so. And the voice you hear me talking to, or you heard in the back talking about taxes, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's is right there, is now. You know what I mean? And he's very hip and and suave on taxes and just economic stuff, period. I don't want to just say taxes. You know what I mean? He's economically, he's a very good person to know. You know Straight what I'm saying? cash, homie. Word up. So, and he is now here on Groundhog TV podcast, and that's what it is, man. So we we just we're gonna talk about economics and money and everything like that, but we also want to get into a lot of the new headlines that was out, and I'm really kind of disgusted about a lot of things and certain issues that's coming up in the game or not in the game, but in America right now. Like it's taking my mind off the creative part of things. That you know what I mean? Like my my creativity, I can be very influenced creative wise by furiousness and vengeance. You you feel what I'm saying? Like that's what I mean. Like I I just want to create like videography, music, you know, marketing things like that, doing better things with my children, and you know what I'm saying. But some of the headlines that's going on today is making me look at things like vengeful and disheartening and angry emoji face. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like shit like that. So I want to talk about this. And one of the headlines is, you know, in Mississippi, they, they're saying that they reinstated the Jim Crow laws. Now, for everybody that don't know what the Jim Crow laws is, that was when back in the days, and not too long ago, maybe like 60 years ago, it was supposedly really been finished, but this is when Caucasian people was able to just do whatever to black people, and they were not they were never wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like how Emmett Till supposedly whistled at some lady, and he got killed, and uh, a bunch of different things happened where... Some what we now today call Karens would say some shit and lie about a black person doing something to them and an angry mob of white people on their horses or their horse and carriages or in their pickup trucks will go and attack the person and kill them and hang them and burn them while hanging them. And take pictures next to it and take little burnt pieces of the body and have them as souvenirs. And I know for a fact that I'm not allowing that to happen to me or my family. So if they're trying to reinstate laws back like that, like something got to be done about that. Or that has to be national news because a lot of people is not really talking about it. And that's one of the things that I wanted to make sure that I was live today in studio with like-minded people that can, you know what I mean, really address the situation in a, in a very articulate way. You feel me? Because this shit is ridiculous, and I'm kind of upset and offended by the shit. So I want to talk about it. So I got Is is Now in here with me, and we got Math. You know, actually, we got Style by Poverty in here, producing the show as usual, as y'all know. And I want to hear, like, some of the takes on that. So, yo... Is like let us know like what's your take on that and how you feel about that. Well, uh, it's heavy when you first hear the. Uh, first, let me say thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here on definitely the Groundhog TV podcast. Uh, been hearing about it for a while, checking it out. I'm happy to be uh, 
I guess. That's a fact. You know, you hear Jim Crow automatically. The first thing that come out of our, comes into our mind is it won't be me. All right, I ain't yeah. gonna be the one. You know, getting hung, burnt, whatever. You know, craziness. Yeah. Um, but it we have to keep in mind that it is. You know, media folks who sell information or you know sort of derive their money from clicks and advertising and. And that sort of thing to put up flashy headlines that really grab at us and, and get our attention. So just to hear Jim Crow, we don't want to automatically just go running out in the street ready to, you know. Okay. So fight back sh- against our Caucasian. Should we brother. should we look it up and 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 well, and, and don't get it twisted? Like I, I agree with you. Fight, like you said, fight against our Caucasian brother. Like there's a lot of white people out there that I'm really close to that's like family to me and stuff 100%. like that. That's a known fact out here. So no it's doubt. not against or just going against the white people. It's making sure that white people can't do what they did back then. Yeah, no, I'm with you there. That's Certainly. that's just the facts. Certainly. Like I'm you not. Don't be... I don't give a fuck how much we friends. Like hey, that's not just going to happen, <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying. So I'm looking into what it goes on behind the headline, and uh, so a couple. But of... hold on, let me play. Let me play the post first that I posted. Okay. Because a lot of people's been commenting on it, and some of my okay. white friends yeah. and black friends or followers, they were kind of like getting at each other in the comments and stuff. So okay. I want to. Play what the girl was saying and Go stuff like that. Go you know what I'm saying? This to start a motherfucking army. Hold up. To protect your fellow people. Because if y'all don't know how fucking serious this shit is about to get, if they pass that motherfucking law, make law story short. If a white person did something to you, guess what? They getting all fucking free. Period. Point. Fucking blank. You guys are the only army we have right now. You buzz, you crips, you Cert 13s, all y'all Lang kings, all y'all motherfuckers. Y'all are the only protection that we have right now. Like I said, we can't depend on the motherfucking government. We cannot depend on the motherfucking cops. And it's sad, like I said, it's sad that I have to log on to the fucking internet and find this shit when this shit should have made national motherfucking news. With that being said, strap the fuck up. That's all I know. It's just strap the fuck up. Protect yourself. Protect your families. All right. All right. <laughs> what you got to say about that? Listen. Is now. Tell me what you feel about that. All right. Before the sister, you know, she is. Um, you can't never put anything past America. Right. So, like, I, I won't even pretend like the possibility of the wildest things we could ever think of happening or coming back again are impossible or are impossible to come back again right so it yeah, happened in this could, country already not that happened. far ago son it could happen it can happen right but right all of this right now is i just want to speak to what the actual events occurring in mississippi are okay and then we all can right. talk about strapping up for the Race war that might be coming. All right. All right? So is you going to so play something? Are you going to read no, it? No. Well, I pulled it out. I want to source it so people understand. Okay. It's you know. So you need your other glasses or something? No, nah, I think Good? I can all see right, here. Cool. I got it on one hundred and fifty percent. Okay, okay. The maximum. I just, I just want to make sure. <laughs> right. We, we live. We live on a lot of spots. I do have my glasses. <laughs> if you want to get them, them no, if you want to get them, I'll hold back, before you start though, reading, you know? I don't want you to be like. Ugh. Now people like, how the fuck is nigga going to know shit and he don't even know how to read? Because you can't see. <laughs> nah, it's a little you know fuzzy. I think I'll get through. All right. So this is from the Mississippi Today, right? So uh, the Mississippian Today, I guess this is their, like, sort of, uh, I don't know. Looks like a print article or a print paper. Is it from a valuable, in, a valuable, Yeah, it seems to, reputable. Right? I mean, I'm seeing the same story on all of... Really, you know, who's reputable now, right? They either withhold information or purposefully lie to their, you know, viewers for political. So whatever, you know, information right now is a it's a fire hose and we got to sort of try to knife through and find what's really real or factual. Right. right? right. But given what this is saying here, we're going to take it is from the Mississippi Today, Mississippi Today dot org. Okay. Right. And it says the U.S. Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals has affirmed a lower court ruling allowing a provision of the 1890 Mississippi Constitution designed to keep African-Americans African Americans from voting. 
to remain in place, right? So first off, just from reading that, it's a law that was already on the books, so it seems, and it's being upheld, right? Right. So to say in the headline that they're bringing it back and we got to be ready automatically, that is debunked by what actually happened facts on the ground. It's already been on the books for all this time and they're voting to reinforce it. And yeah, but when you think it about it, Right. There were laws back then that they can rape, rob, pillage and hang and lynch black uh, people. So them laws was already on it. Even in the laws, we are not even considered are, equal human beings to white people. What? Wait, say that again. There's laws where it says we're not even full human. That there we're were not, once three fifths. Right. But what I'm but saying, that was, you think that was taken yeah, out? Or that, that just was like abolished. closed. Uh, closed? Closes. is. You know, all just like they closed that law where they talking about they want to do the Jim Crow shit again. That was already on the books. They just stopped it when they supposed to freed everyone. But all those laws are still in the laws. Well, this particular law talks about felons being able to vote. Right. And in Mississippi, according to this article, uh, felons in Mississippi are not allowed to vote. Now, we know, you know, and I have to sort of do a little bit more digging, but I. I believe some voting rights for felons have been reinstated uh, federally here now. So this Mississippi law seems to sort of fly in the face of the larger uh, social movement that we have for our brothers, our returning citizens, mostly who are getting some of their rights back, their gun rights, their voting rights, all wonderful things. But it seems like this particular law in Mississippi is flying in the face of the sort of populist wave to get you know incarcerated felons some of their rights back do i agree or disagree with mississippi's rule i you know um i don't so personally before i go into my agree or disagree because i don't agree with it right but it's already on the book so who am i to of disagree course it's on the with books. something it was like we were I, we were considered less than and you know they were doing anything to us it's it's in the history books from Emmett Till to even now up to date stuff like Sandra Bland, yeah, George Floyd. No like, doubt. It's the no same doubt. thing going on now. So for them to really be talking about it, it's just putting a fire on something that's still actually going on right now. All of these people that were, and she said it in this post. I don't know if I, I started it too early or whatever, but she said, we can't even trust these cops. We can't even trust the black cops. That's because those cops well, went out there and they practically lynched that guy. I got a lot guy. of police officer friends, a lot of good people in NYPD I do. who I know personally and yeah. I love them. So I'm not going to talk bad about them. Yes, I'm not talking bad about cops. Wasn't I just on the yeah, last show certainly. where I said a cop pulled me over when I was on my way to Rich's yeah. funeral? Oh, I'm not saying you talking bad about them, just for the record. All right, but, cool. Yeah. I want to just clarify everything because we here to clarify stuff up. But, you yeah. know, we know police force was, in, was started to catch slaves. Freed slaves. That is, uh, that, to my understanding, saying. the yeah. original force yes. was you're, you're, a yeah. uh, slave capturing force. I would, I would look uh, at you as one of the smartest force. guys I know. Man. Yeah, well, I appreciate you know, that. That's a low bar. You know intending. exactly what I'm talking about. Like the 100%. Police, in the police sign, their little logo, mm -hmm. there's a fucking slave master with a whip. In the logo. Oh, I never yeah. noticed that. But look, we can look that up, that. too. Okay. In Correct. the police, yeah, Correct. in the police yeah. logo that they have. Uh-huh. It's a it's a slave master with a whip, bro. Yo, I, still to this day that know, that's honored. Like, so it's actually. But if a, I could push back on that a little bit, right? Because there are lots of things that started from one thing and that have evolved to a larger sort of benefit of to our society. Our, our lives evolve into you know, something else when we no make question. families and we branch off and start our own families and our own generations. Mm -hmm. Everything is going to evolve, but sometimes things all happen again. Police and fire are a necessity in our society, I believe, to yes, keep and is. maintain civil order as we all socially agree And everybody's to. not going to be but good and everybody's the, not going to be bad. That's right. The Once you are, you know, it seems like a lot of folks are accepting more of the power and appreciating the power rather than the responsibility. And then once that power goes to the head, you see what happens in, um, you know, Minnesota and uh, where was that? The uh, This latest one. I don't even remember. There's so many. Um, Mississippi. Yes, it's it's everywhere. Lot. Just America, right? You don't even have to name the, the states anymore. It's just like everywhere, right? You know. Everywhere is fucked up, bro. Everywhere. Well, and well it's like you know what? I, I'm going to push back on that too, right? Because I think 
everywhere seems to be more fucked up because of these things that we are able to connect with all the time. I'm going right? to stop you but right there. I'm going to tell you, it wasn't fucked up for me this morning in the neighborhood, just walking around, you know, going You're to right, do this, that, and the other thing. It wasn't fucked up for fire. you. Yeah, because right. I'm home in the crib with wifey and Family, everything. But people. at the same time, it's, what the fuck was that? I was a microphone. I fell out of it. So um, there's a lot of places where they were fucked up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's just weird to me how now with all of this technology, we're seeing a lot of the stuff that's already been going on. Like just because this this is a different age and we are have different technology, that doesn't mean that all of the stuff that we're seeing online now Mm -hmm. wasn't happening. 10 times over because a lot of these laws were in effect Mm -hmm. and a lot of people could go around and do whatever the fuck they wanted and this is why a lot of us we're mixed with Caucasians because our great great grandmothers were raped by their slave masters and our great grandmothers were born our great great grandmothers were born and then they started a whole family and we're all descendants of some slave master raping our great great grandmothers in the barn because they owned them and they were their property and mm-hmm. our yeah. existence was started. You got to take that into consideration because that shit is real. Absolutely yeah. real. Still to this day, it's ironic that a lot of our people are dying from eating the same soul food that the slaves would give our ancestors as s- scraps and slops. And they turned it into delicacies that is now killing a lot of us to this day. No doubt. No doubt about that. You know, I don't, not to blow the secret for your guest here, but you don't have to go too far for um, our uh, slave master blood dilution story, right? Our grandfather, right? Yes. Julius, uh, I forgot his middle name. Something Bryant, I forgot his middle name. Uh, he is the son of a Hasidic Jew who had an inappropriate sexual relationship with his floor washing maid, who was our great grandmother, Mm -hmm. who just happened to be a a native American woman. Yep. He had this inappropriate relationship, fathered this child, our grandfather, uh, kicked her out, kicked them to the curb, you know, and uh, he suffered the cultural unacceptance of the native american side because of his white skin and his long you know stringy hair and uh the obviously the hasidic jew side you know his grandpa was yeah. german jew right yeah 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 and you look like an indian yeah well i don't know you you know yeah my mom's kind of resembles your mom's him. resembles him yeah yeah More yeah, than yeah. but you know talk about right the black man gets a lot of uh strife oh your father and children all over the place right but there's two things to that narrative right number one as property of the owners in those early times and here our bodies were used as uh broods you know or not broods but um steeds or bucks you know to breed right we were cattle we was used as cattle they were even making Mothers and sons fuck, make babies so they can feed them to alligators. Mm. And that's where they get the term gator bait from. Mm -hmm. Look at that. And so you add that cultural difference from what our native tribal heritage was along with, uh, um, you know, today's sort of, uh, I don't know. I don't know how you want to term it, but like the perpetuation of this. You want some of this? What is that? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'll take a little swig. Why not? Again, light in here. Take a little, yeah. Pour me a little bit in there. All right? Um, so, breeding us as cattle, using us in that way, and then, you know, spinning it forward, perpetuating a culture that celebrates that sort of thing. But that original behavior was derived from, you know, those who once owned us, using our women in that regard, right? multiple sexual uh, partners and breeding us with each other and all of this sexual sort of stuff, you know, that wasn't inherent in the tribal African. um, Well, you know, the the, the colonizers, they not only like made 
mothers and sons and uncles and cousins and nieces and nephews have sex, they were also having sex with their property. Mm-hmm. And when I say property, I mean humans. No doubt. So no not doubt. only the women they was raping, they were raping mm-hmm. the men too. That was called buck breaking. Oh, they yeah. would rape the men in front of the family to show the family that they were in control mm-hmm. and that man didn't have mm-hmm. the power. And he didn't have the I don't power. give a fuck how big and strapping he was because most of them slaves were strong yeah, men. no doubt. But those white men no would bend them over right mm-hmm. in them town in front of everybody, right his wife, everybody. children, everybody, mm-hmm. and fuck him in the ass. Or cut off his balls. Or oh. cut off his dick and balls. All, I mean, it's all been, you know, in the sort of dominance of Right, us the big back, the big black threat, right? But um, you know the spirit is strong and we couldn't be broke. So you know there's been multiple ways we couldn't be broke. We couldn't be broke individually, us. but I think as a people, we have some some issues that yeah. we gotta fix. Oh no question. I think you know, and I think Homegirl was kind of right. All of these gang members and these all these Bloods Crips and mm-hmm. all these essays and all them motherfuckers mm-hmm. that want to bang over a block or a color. Like, it's time to bang for your ethnicity. Mm. That's an interesting question. Ethnicity, right? We talked about that a bit. Um, you know. Yo. Asian. H- how come I could go Indian. to, how come I could, we could go every city in the United States and it's a big Chinatown community? Mm-hmm. Why? Mm-hmm. You can go places a big Jewish community. You can go places it's a big Arab Pakistani community. Is black There's, an ethnicity? African American is an ethnicity. It's just the fact that our skin is black because there's other like there's Latin well, people then, that's is African American an ethnicity. Yeah, it is because there's black people everywhere. So you just can't mm-hmm. say because there's Latin people that's an ethnicity, but there's black Latin people. Just because some of them have like lighter melanated well, skin, I think bl- there's black, there's black Mexicans, black Panamanians, black Dominicans. There's black. I mean, they are blacker than you, and they speak nothing but Spanish. No, that I'm, means that's black because black people are only discriminated because of the color of their skin. So when we say black, we mean the descendants of slaves. Anybody that's black, because even in Haiti. Well, what the is darker that? people are hated them on by the lighter people. The Dominican people who are Latin, they hate on the darker Dominican people. Yeah, I'm familiar with even you know, in our Guyana struggles with skin they're, that's a, they're, they're a Caribbean ruled country, but mm-hmm. at the same time, the the Indian, the more Indian people mm-hmm. don't like the blacker Guyan Guyan right. people. But so it's see, all about in all those, skin color. No, I dig that, and that's definitely sort of the mind poison that's come from yes, the colonial so we have society. To fix that. But I ask you about specifically African American, and so all those places: Guyana, mm-hmm. uh, Haiti, uh, Dominican Republic, all of those. They're African yeah, South American. Yeah, ethnicities for sure. Mm-hmm. But I'm not sure if black is an ethnicity, and I'm not, I'm not entirely sure if African American. I'm not really so what sure is, if I. So Asian people, so, what would you consider them? Is that an ethnicity? Yeah, I think, well, I don't know. Asian is broad, right? Because we can be talking about Southeast Asian. We can be talking about Oriental, you can be like talking about Ch- Chinese. Uh, Tokyo, we can be talking about Taiwan Japan, or whatever. Yeah, 100%. And they don't like each other. No doubt. Korean or exactly. whatever. Yeah, exactly. sure, 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 sure. So, sure. yes, so, it has to each be one of those sort of subsets of what you would term Asian or Oriental or whatever has their own specific ethnicity with their own specific. Uh, I don't know. Well, what are they? Uh, Values. What are they? What are they? What are they all to you? What are they all to you? A black person or a black man. When you look at a Filipino Asian person to a Japanese Asian person to a Vietnamese Asian person to a Chinese Asian person, what are they to you? They're Asian. They're Chinese. They, you, oh, you don't look me, at Vietnamese well, as oh he's they they're not Chinese because they're Vietnamese. Oh, they're not uh, they're not Chinese because they're Japan. No, when you look at them, they're all Asian to you. So their ethnicity is Asian. Just like when they look at all of us dark people, mm. we're black to them. And well, some would say niggers. So that the ER. would be right. And that would what that would be what we would call a social fact. Right? No, I only speak we facts have, up here. So but that social fact doesn't work in our best interests. Let me tell you. That's why we right? have to change because, some things. Well, who? Is the we, right? Is it black we, people. the community, black folks who have 
you know, to a large degree, very little uh, say or oh, an increasingly larger say in the public narrative. But I think within our a, community, I think hold on, let me say. let me tell you this. A large say, I don't know. The grand media, you're going to get maybe, I the don't know the numbers, media, we can get a fact but check. Media, but media dictates everything. Like when, when the government wants dictate, to fuck something over, they'll throw something in the media to fuck you all up. And if they want to take it real crazy, they'll throw a little pandemic in the mix. But black people, with our, with our culture, we can kind of control the narrative. We can, but... We're too we busy. don't control the narrative, we're and we never control because the we're busy. We're too busy trying to be up at the with, with with these other people that we won't allow our popularity and our platforms to do that. It's not a lot of people that speak out about the real shit that's going on. Soon as Kanye West spoke out about it, look what happened to him. And there's met other big millionaires out there that have big platforms that everybody's paying attention to, but they won't say nothing about it because they don't want to get that same fate. This country has been built on showing black people that we're inferior to these people. And if you get out of line, you're going to get whipped. So it's a lot of black people that's in power that can really take a stand and spread the word about shit that won't say nothing. And the ones that do say something, oh, they're crazy, they're schizo, or oh, they're bipolar. I think you give um, the fissures and the fractures within our social hierarchy and our own community are just as much to blame for the lower end of our people's suffering as you know anything any Caucasian or redlining or any policies have done. This guy is so damn smooth. He is so, so damn smooth. You know, I think... Um, we don't really control the distribution and the means to production on a mass scale that can affect the hearts and minds of people to really change the narrative on black, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. And when you're when you are attributing black to a folk and you attribute that same terminology with negative connotation, you know, whatever it is, welfare, crime, et cetera, et cetera, then you're always painting everyone with that same broad brush. And if we really, in my mind, want to change the change, right, transform, evolve uh, the um, this society we live in, America, our country that we participated in building in, I mean, really, there's only three ways, right? Militarily, it's not going to happen, right? We just don't have that sort of power. As much as the sister wants us to arm up our gangbangers, all due respect to my peoples, I know a lot of them on both sides, Colorado, L.A., here, you know, the homie, all of that, right? It's just not a lot of winds going that direction, right? Pol- the government's been destroying <coughs> whole cities and like there's there's the rivers military. there's rivers in America that are cities rivers that bury black cities. Black folks not going to win a war for equality militarily. Uh, politically, you got a much better shot, but it seems like you know once you get to a certain age or a certain level, you know you're bound by what that swamp is. So economically, I believe, and why I've devoted myself to everything I do every waking moment, being about you know being about empowering my mind and my my folks and sharing information economically is the only way that i believe black folks will have a real say in what happens so to them here in, in the control world of our spending and our dollars well a little bit more than you know even before we in control of our dollars i think we got to be in control of our minds right a lot of what we know about money is just wrong false inaccurate um debilitating um and you know but money's consumerist a, money's, money's really a big focused. scam anyway Our dollar is not based on anything other than our credibility and our ability to produce GDP, right? right? One, what's the GDP formula? I just seen something Uh, online where we don't even really never own anything. No one in America. If you buy a house, you really don't own it. It's called some Abla something Hmm. where you can really own your stuff without nobody else saying anything to you about it. But you pay off your house and you think you own it, you really don't own it. The government could really come and take your shit whenever they choose to. Yeah. Um, I have no personal experience with that and I'm not entirely sure Same, of the saying. phrase you're referring to, but to my on, understanding, but if you do take out a lien on them with a bank and you pay off that mortgage and you have that deed and 
you know, that financial you, you contract is, um, you know, satisfied, you have that property ownership and you're still responsible for the taxes. Exactly. But so if but, you can't pay them taxes, would they not still well, come yeah, and take Well, yeah, you don't shit? pay the taxes, So certainly. then you never really own it, Ice. Well, how? Yeah, how? I, I guess. I, if you I mean, pay it I can off see the deed and you say you own it, but you still got to pay taxes every month and you can't afford them taxes and they could still come take your shit after you paid off on it? So you never really owned it, son. You never really uh, owned it. Taxes are a part of taxes our American is a, is a, is a scam that makes sure that and we got to pay to be here. And all our social security numbers is really our EIN numbers. And we're all businesses. Yo, United States of America is an LLC, Inc. And so the smart thing to do for people who are, you know, right? You're not going to, right? Who's changing the tax code today? Nobody. But what you can do is you can go read that code and apply those rules to your own circumstance and take advantage of the rules on the books. And that's what I'm about rather than, you know, so much railing against. So before we get into before we get into what you're about and what you do and what you could bring to the, you know, the culture, I want to talk about my week. And um, for all of y'all that didn't know or don't know. Um, your boy World Rama is now off the market. I didn't tie the knot again. No, I didn't tie the knot. Show I didn't, I didn't tie the knot again. You know what I'm saying? First time, real time. Yeah. Well, I did it before. Y'all know from on the last you. couple shows I was on up, here, I see and I was talking Peace about how me. you know my firstborn, you know Miki, aka Hoff Two, and um. You know, I found out that he wasn't biologically my child. I was actually married to his mother, but I didn't let that traumatizing issue stop me from moving on and being in love again and marrying and remarrying again. And I did that, you know what I mean? February 28th. Actually, this year, February 16th, is the first time I met my, my wife. And I wanted to make sure that we were married in February on our 15th anniversary. So Congratulations. we've been together 15 years, and I wanted to marry her on the 15th year. And that's what I did. And I always say what I'm going to do, and I do what I say. And we did that. So welcome to my family, Mrs. Bryant. And I am always have fun with your family. You know what I'm saying? Every time we go out on vacations and cruises and parties and shit, I always have fun. There was a lot of ups and downs and trials and tribulations and hate each other phases and all that. But that's what relationships <laughs> is about. We're both Tauruses and we love hard and we sealed the deal. So, yes, babe, you thank you for taking me in and you take and I'm taking you in. And we now one. We're. We're now one, you Mr. and Mrs. Bryant. Black love, right? For all of those who say, right, you can't, you better, oh, you better, you can't get with nobody because you got that path. No, we are capable of being emotionally mature enough to move on from that hurt, become whole beings again, and give ourselves to someone else. Exactly. Fully. Because we make, we make, with it. we make women wives, we start families. You know what I mean? And and we got we we have to appreciate the women that we have in our lives because the one that and the ones that are good to us. Not just that's the women right. that's in our lives. Because there's that's women right. in our lives that are not good to us. Facts. But the ones that are good to us and you gotta understand and know that I feel like I wanted to take myself off the market because I felt like this woman deserved it. She deserved to be a wife. And that's what it's all about with us men. If y'all ladies didn't know, when we wanna marry you. Well, some of us, because some dudes want to marry women because they need a place to stay or they they, they <laughs> fucked up in the game and shit like that. But That's I married terrible. my woman after 15 years of being with her because I know she's the one. And that's just it. Like you told me, she holds you down. Yeah. You know you yeah. can depend and rely on her when exactly. you are having a tough go of it. Yep, yep. And that's real. As well as me for Never her. Never mind all this. Yeah. I'm with you because, you know, because some of them, you know, it can be an, a bottomless pit yep. or an empty hole, right? And you Facts. just filling it up with material nonsense or emotional, immature foolishness, right? When you know you have something that's special and, and long-lasting, you know, you go ahead and you commit to that. Yep. But if it ain't that, you can't make it that. 
Yeah, some dudes want to make it that, but can't make some. Yo, I ain't gonna front. Me and my lady, we my lady, my wife. See now, I got see that. That's the thing. Now I'm. <laughs> I, this is my wife. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? We've been through so much stuff together from each other's families not getting along and each other's kids not getting along, and it's a lot that we went through. But our love conquered all, and we stuck this shit out. So, like, shout out Papoose and Remy Ma. They always promoting that black love shit and. Yo, when you love your woman, you love your woman, and your woman love you, and that's just what it is, man. And you know, through thick and thin, y'all gonna till death do y'all part. Y'all gonna make that shit work. And Are they we married? Doing that. Yeah, Remy and Pap is married for sure. Nah, I didn't know that. That's a fact. You know what I mean? So black love all day, every day, and it ain't nothing wrong with black people marrying black people. You know what I'm saying? Because it's a, it's a big it's a big stigma now. Because a lot of men kind of want to try different nationalities now. Even though whatever we deal with, we make it black. We make it black when we shoot a seed up in any other culture. We make it in black. But you know what I mean? It's all about keeping it in with your own. Because that's what is really going on out here with all of these other nationalities. You know what I mean? They keeping it in with their own, and that's just how they sustaining. The wealth and the, uh, you know, the camaraderie with their own people. Like Jews have their own neighborhoods. Chinese people have their own neighborhoods. Arab people have their own neighborhoods. And they keep it in their family. You know what I'm saying? And that's what, you know what I'm saying, us as black people got to do as well. So I feel good also to, to have married a black woman and my queen. She's my queen. And that's just what it is. And I'm off the market now. So ladies, just know I'm off the market. So I don't I don't I don't go to places looking to see women and oh yeah yeah I can look all day but I'm not out there trying to bag nothing and do all that like read the menu no order you know what I'm saying exactly I'm just reading menus and gawking and looking <laughs> <laughs> but I ain't looking for nothing else other than that relationships can be tricky man they can be complicated but you know if you can I was having a heated discussion the other night and I was saying you know if we can come to understanding right because we don't always see the world entirely the same exactly the same and one situation can be viewed from two different perspectives from two people who have different sort of cultural influences on their you know informing their thoughts right so rather than assuming a thing is this or that simply come to an emotional mature place where i can communicate calmly and reasonably this is what happened. This is what I see. Please tell me what you're going through there and let's try to come to some understanding because this thing upset me. This thing made me mad or uh, I felt the way about it. Right. But I think once you start to get to the yelling and the screaming and the name calling right off the rip, it's just a bad way for communication. Well, me and my lady, we went through a lot. We went to physical fights, arguing, saying hurtful shit to each other. Mm. We didn't been through all of that. Yeah, and if we, if me and her could stand through the test of time, through all of that, mm -hmm. and still love each other, and still be attracted to each other, and mm -hmm. want to do things for each other, because I don't, I can't even front. Like my lady, she does a, she she does a lot for me. Like I'm, and I'm not talking about like financially. I'm just saying, mm -hmm. like when we in a house, like she's just a homebody type of old fashioned woman mm. that loves to tend to her man. She'll look. give me a little fight, a little something, cause she's a <laughs> she's a Taurus, so she feisty, sure. but she still does it. Yeah, whether it's cooking, cleaning, whatever, just mm -hmm. whatever. Like, and we gotta get what 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 makes us feel special. Yeah, and I got yeah, me a no special doubt. one, and I and I gotcha. gave her my last name. So, nice. I love you, T. That's a fact, and you know it. I proved my oh, love yeah. to you by letting you know, like you mine now forever. <laughs> you ain't never ain't, yeah, going nowhere. I ain't getting a divorce. This is it. This is my second marriage. I ain't getting a divorce no more. That sounds like the headlock. Come yeah, the exactly. Headlock. You know we us Tauruses. We we real bull fool, bull fool, bull fool. You you stuck with me forever. These good people. Cause we already we already up there, man. We ain't young. We ain't young spring chickens no more. We middle aged and shit. And that's another thing. I wanted to. I wanted to make. I want to do that for my woman. And make her a married woman. You know what I'm saying? It's a, a lot of women grow up from when they're younger and they want to always talk about getting married and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like it's time for my baby. And I felt like, you know what? The ultimately that's one of the great things I could do for her is make her a wife. And I did it. So an honest woman. 
Yes, that's what they call it, honest woman. I'm glad you said that, mm-hmm. Ice. I wanted to make sure I said the right thing. Right. And I wanted to make her an honest woman, and I love her, and that's what I wanted to do for her. So here's my last name. You know what I mean? You're an honest woman now. And you know what's so crazy? Because shout out to my guy, Blue Diaz, because, you know, he been with his, his shorty for a minute, and he was telling me how... He's ready to get married because I'm influencing people out here to get married. Look at you. Like, hearing them. Yeah, you know what I'm Yo, I ain't going to front because honestly, since I've been married or since I've been, I've been in this relationship for a while, but since I've been married and we ain't been going through no real issues like that, mm-hmm. I don't have the need to really worry about other situations or going places and trying to get the women and, uh-huh. and going places and worrying about the women. I got, I got more focus on my business and my children That's and- right. My job and right. just doing things. I don't now have to chase and worry about a woman because Ain't nobody chasing. I'm off the market. At 50 I'm years off old. the market. Get like, the like, go here. ahead, yo, ladies, go ahead. My, my <laughs> I'm in this club to have a good time. Maybe film, network, you know, <laughs> do a show. Right. I ain't, I ain't worrying about you, mama. So don't think I'm here to trying to bag you. That's right. If my lady ain't there with me at the spot, she home right there taking care of shit. I'm ra- waiting to go back home to my, my family. The only reason I'm in here is because I'm getting paid. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm here on some business shit. So that also is what this 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 does for me. It, yeah. it takes me off the market to me going anywhere and even have to worry about mm-hmm. any of that. Mm-hmm. I don't have to wear. Oh, I'm gonna get a shorty tonight. And I'm gonna, uh, nah, <laughs> no, I don't not. care. I'm not here for that. And That's women right. know that too. From once they see you with this ring on, they know oh, he married. So they may try to test you mm. or whatever the case. Oh, be, they but, definitely gonna test. Right, but they know 100%. that you ain't here for them. Right. So whatever else you doing, whether you chilling with a drink at the bar, just vibing, mm-hmm. they know you. Right. If she ain't there with you, you, you got somebody at you home. You gotta be somewhere at some point. Exactly. So, so get up, get, wanna, the, <laughs> get the fuck up get out, the of fuck here. out of here. Exactly. If I want to test it, I know it's going home eventually. Word up. So, yeah, <laughs> babe. She's like, she on here like, I can't with you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's how I feel now. So I'm, I'm happy to be married again. Like, so I, I feel what good. What do you say about the fact, right? We were talking about things being created. All right? Uh-huh. Right now, you have subscribed to a, uh, what do you call it? To a, uh, I don't know. A ritual, let's say, mm-hmm. that its original intended purpose was to create the product, the productive Caucasian male, right? Men prior to marriage were having multiple sexual relations, right. and but we were, all go through that, even well, if we're married. You, they were having multiple sexual, and the productivity of that man was significantly reduced. So they passed a law that said one man had to be married to one woman. Mm. And once that law was passed and it became right or ritual, then productivity from the men increased. And that, just like the police, right, started from slavery or slave catching, and now it's our sort of social safety net. Marriage originally started from you know having to try and get men to be more productive in their work and less you know with the fuckery well it's working for me (laughs) is that right yeah it's getting me not focused on trying to be out here looking at ass and and Mm -hmm. feet and titties uh, trying to see if i could bring something home or to a hotel Mm -hmm. like it lets everybody know that look i ain't here for that mama and i like that I like the pressure of that being off me. I you know? My, I see my guy, GVO. Big shout out to GVO, Tahir. I see you. Yeah. Uh, he says, uh, communication is key, but having a foundation as an individual is even more important. I, I'm with you there, brother, for sure. Right? Like, we got to bring, I think, the healthy way to exist in a relationship is to bring your full circle of love for self into the middle. And then that other person brings their full self, a love of self, into the middle. And then that forms that strong union there. And communication definitely lubricates the wheels when you come to misunderstanding. Uh, but This burned know, popcorn pretty good. Ah, see, he was making fun of it earlier. That liquor didn't kick in. <laughs> Big shout to uh, my moms. They're all my, this is my stepmoms, you know, by marriage, but... She was around forever, and uh, she loves burnt popcorn. Mm, and uh, pretty good. That's where I get it from. Shout out to after yeah. this event, we going to um, Chris Welch's show. 
right around the corner. But I love her like my mother. She knows that. I don't need to step my mom. You too close. And this is your this is your father's wife. My father's wife. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's up. See, that's the thing. Now I want my, my I want my son to be just as accepting of my wife as you are to your father's yeah, wife. I do it, man. You know what I mean, like. I want everybody to love who I love. She had a significant influence on my life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, her mother. I saw. I mean, you know, our grandmother, right? She wasn't. She was like this. You know, pretty. You know, she ain't really want nothing to do with us to a large degree. Or at least me. I don't know. I can't. I don't know what type. No, of me and grandma was tight. Mm, grandma ain't want nothing to do with me. I don't know. And you lived home. in the same building as her. I know. Yeah. Went and got her paper every Sunday, but mm, wow. I wasn't really like that. But my stepmother's. Mother, art, drama, theater, you know, we'd hang out. She was great. I know we ain't eating popcorn and everything, but just so y'all know, is now is my blood cousin, my first cousin. We grew up together. I got plenty of history with him. Actually, if y'all looking at me on the lot right now, this cut right here on my lip, he did that shit playing around with a knife (laughs) with me. Did I? Oh well, yeah, you did, motherfucker. I don't remember that. It's when we lived in Bronx, Brooklyn, on some street. What's the street with you? Y'all lived in the Brownstone. Oh, Macon. Macon in Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I lived with a lot of family members when I was younger because we was like the black sheep <laughs> of the family. We was homeless a lot, so we stayed with family members, which was cool because it built my bond with a lot of my cousins and shit like that. Thanks. And this is one of them that's here today with me on the show, that's and real. he's doing a very well, doing very well for himself, and I'm proud of him. And it's all love. There's DNA involved in here. It's not just some, that's my guy. I know that's my blood. His mother and my mother are sisters. (laughs) You know what I mean? So that's real right there. And that's why he's here. But we talked about the slavery thing and everything like that. We talked about marriage and all of that. Mm -hmm. But I want to get into what is it that you have to say about economics and the culture and stuff like that? And what is it that you have to say about taxes and things of that sort and businesses and investments and things like that? Because that's why you're here today. Well, you know, I appreciate that. The opportunity to share those thoughts, I think it's very important. Mm-hmm. I touched on it earlier. Uh, in our community, it's, I mean, it's very simple. In what I deem the Afro-American community, uh, our stature, our social hierarchy is, in my opinion, consistently eroding to the other cultures and ethnicities who are seeming to prosper while we continue to devolve, right? And if we're going to affect any change as much as you want to see people in the streets, perhaps, or whatever it is, you know, social uh, movements and the like, I think the true course to power in America is through economic power. That's the thing that moves the needle more than anything else. And while our spending dollars have true power, our economic influence dollars are meek, uh, meager is best at best, right? We're we're super popular during the presidential primaries. Why would we have know? a spending power of three trillion, but yet we don't own nothing? Because we have been trained as people for as long as we've been allowed to be trained to be consumers. And um, through our education. Consumers of our own culture? Consumers of material possessions and things we were deprived of. uh, Consumers of just about anything we can work to buy. Right? We have traded in our... Our collective communal responsibility for our own safety and economic growth for our individual consumerist material possession. And it's weakened our unity. It's weakened our collective communities. It's weakened our family structure. And now it has us, in my opinion, socially weakened. What do you think we could do to get that back? Well, man, that's a spider web of solution. I think your opinion, my opinion, um, I think the first thing you have to do is really poor people, poor people are poor, not because they don't have cash, because they're misinformed. That's the first thing. So to fight poverty, I I think first you have to be better informed about what money is, what our economic structure is and what avenues you have available to you. 
right? I think you just have to generally have an understanding of economics, finance, taxes. Uh, so basically, you know, we gotta be to we, do basically money. we gotta be debunked to wanna go shopping every time we come into some money. You know, we've been that's a mental thing that we gotta fix mentally. That's because that's, that's a lot bigger than just coming together as a people. We gotta mentally no. get out of it. You know, a lot of the things that we suffer from in our community are sort of internalized, generational, biochemical sort of programming, right? But yo, I hang out with a lot of white people, too, and time. they like brands and names, too. They wear Gucci shoes and Gucci stuff, and they buy that, too. Sure. Do their communities have the same impact? Uh, are they under the same sort of historical, generational, oppressive um, Definitely circumstances not, we are? They are just as flashy as we like to be. Right. And the difference is, you know, not to be a hater. Like, because I don't want to be a hater. I like to look good. I like to, you know, have nice things. You got on Ray-Bans right now. I do. I do. And, and I look like a Louis sweater. You know, I'm not opposed Boy. to <laughs> things, nice things. My point is, at what point do we... So you can't have it both ways, right? You can't say, on one hand, my community is impacted. I'm upset with what's happening in my community. But the nature of those issues, in my opinion, in the community are directly uh, attributed to our economic, you know, circumstance. Right. Right. And our economic circumstance is directly, in my opinion, uh, attributed to our transition from what was our collective economic growth and prosperity in the 30s, 40s, 50s, where we had to protect each other from the Caucasian burning our shit down, or we had to barter, you know, and trade and do business with each other because Jim Crow laws wouldn't let us do business with each other, right? right? Or with the other side, right? And so now we had unity in our community and we were there for each other but now you know you go through 60s 70s 80s 90s and then we pivot to this materialist individualized culture that is you know really about you know sort of but when you think about it like success but slave really masters not having would make the, the slaves wear their best balance sheet to, to go to that church it. Say it again. Slave masters would make the slaves wear their best to go to that church. Yeah, no, I And I that, get was that. A, that was a, that was this was a, a Religion that was forced onto the slaves. Yeah, well, hold on. I, religion looking good on Sunday ain't a religion. I don't okay. know. All right, like they made them wear their best, though. I don't know if they made them wear their best. They did. My understanding, they allowed them to look other than their working selves, and I don't want to call it work because it was, you know, we it know what it was. They wasn't getting paid. I don't mean to undercut it, right? They slaves. definitely wasn't getting paid. The labor, right? But yes, on Sundays, you were allowed to look something other than. And so we've adopt, we've taken that. And right, yeah, we were allowed to look something other than on Sundays, but we were still slaves Monday through Saturday, right? So, or even on Sunday too, we just didn't look the part. So today, I'm not calling us slaves, but economically, we are severely enslaved in a capitalist culture that doesn't allow us to economically prosper in a real way based off of our own creativity and the like. So what are we going to do? We just going to continue to look good on Sunday or are we going to make real headways into, you know, being something other than if we working for a check and we live check to check, we're practically indentured servants. Facts. So a job means just over broke. 100%. You're paid a labor to help another rich man get richer by doing the labor of what he needs to keep his company running. But you so paid a live you paid a wage that you buy stuff for, That's right? the same that's the same thing that Guyanese people were done where they were treated during mm -hmm. slavery time back then and that's why they feel like they're not slaves, they're indentured servants. Oh, they because they because they were paid for their service. Mhm. Mm Whilst black people were Oh, forced. like in the sugar cane fields, they were paid, mm -hmm. whatever. They were okay. paid. So they feel like they're indentured servants and supposed to them being slaves. Whatever, nigga. I don't want to hear that. Uh, you they feel like that. I work with a lot of them. I, that's great. And, you know, I, you know, won't pull anybody's reality out from under their feet, uh, reality rug out from under their feet. But, uh, you know, it's like people time. feeling like the Holocaust was equal to slavery. No, people don't. Uh, well, uh, seen that new yeah. movie with Eddie Murphy in it? 
Yeah, I and, did. You know, we watched that. Did we watch that? Oh no, we were talking about yeah, it, but we didn't watch I watched it together. It a few times. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, uh, I don't agree with that, but they're both you know atrocities. But one is you know, I think clearly and obviously more like significant. Um, but I don't think it's. I don't think anybody wins when you're sort of comparing the the horror of atrocities, right? <laughs> like, I would fire vibes that. is good, my guy. You know, uh, let me. Shout out to my guy Fire Vibes. It's on. It's on the live. Oh yeah, you know. I definitely got to come back out there to Miami, <laughs> vibe with you. Wow. you know what I'm saying, but um, how much more time we got? All right, we gonna we gonna play some music, and then we gonna come back with some more, and we gonna end the show off. <laughs> but um, I just want to get into some music. We gonna vibe. I ate all. Of, I ate all. It is popcorn. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Popcorn adds a little punch to the mic on the chew. <laughs> Yo, listen, when you're independent, you can do, and you can do things your way. You can do things your way, and that's just what it is. So, <clears throat> this uh, what I opened the show with was um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. the instrumental to a new record that I got coming out with Blue Diaz. For everybody that don't know. Me and Blue Diaz is making a lot of hits together. So I just wanted to say shout out to Blue Diaz and I appreciate everything that uh you know we've been doing. You know? And um the new single we got out there is Queens Get the Money. And um I want to go into just the sounds of it real quick on this music break and I'm gonna Come back with more. You already know this Groundhog TV. You rip my soul Where you be at I just don't know Girl now you gotta go Support me is what you lack and you're hitting, I'm not jacking You playing, I'm all facts when I tell you to get your shit My split and get the packing cuz You crap my style, you block my flow You hurt my heart, you rip my soul Where you be at, I just don't know Girl, now you gotta go Girl be trying to play me 
This love shit is kind of scary Cause it kind of drive me crazy All I do is try to love you But you mentally betray me Raised a boy into a man And he wasn't even my baby Shit You want some speech you take my kindness for weakness Because my pocket's the deepest You was lying to me with sweetness But the sour love Got me smoking sour, bud And I want you out in the hour Bitch, relationship is a dub You crept my style You blocked my flow You hurt my heart You ripped my soul Where you be at I just don't know Girl, now you gotta go Once again, pick up to my nigga Dr. Keller, girl. My man Mark, Evelyn, you know how it's going down. Moses, how let your nigga Mark G? 2004, Max Show. Come on. Come on and go with me. He ain't doing you right. Seems like you want to take flight to my place. Been denied. I can give you loving, girl, that's tight right. Giving yourself to me. Can never be wrong if your love is strong. Come on and go to my place. Spend the night, I can give you loving, girl Come on and go with me, he ain't doing you right Seems like you wanna take flight to my place hey. Spend the night, I can give you loving, girl Let's tie it right, giving yourself to me Can never be wrong if your love is strong Come on, on over to my place Spend the night, I can give you loving, girl Two in the morning, talking about he's beating on you, and you found out he's cheating on you. But this is something you already knew. You pray for him to change, but he just remained the same. And you really thought that he was gonna change. Now you're wondering how love brings pain. Uh, and I told you let him go, but now nah, you ain't listen. Now you stuck in this position, can't go nowhere. Can't even talk to your friends. Gotta stay in the house and got to pretend that you let us nigga when you know you don't. You know you feel for me, but you know he won't he let you go. He got you so petrified. He's the reason why you still cry tonight. Come on and go with me. He ain't doing you right. Seems like you wanna take flight to my place. Spend the night, I can give you loving, girl, that's tight right Giving yourself to me, can never be wrong if your love is strong Come on, you gotta go to my place Spend the night, I can give you loving, girl Baby, just give me some time, you know everything will work itself out I just need you, I need you to be here I explain to you why I love him and I need him and I need you too so just please I'm getting real tired of being the second man when the first man is not even the man you want you scared to leave him like if you need him go ahead and let him act up I have one of my niggas see him now when he makes your cry who's the one who kiss your tears when he leaves your side who's the one who's always there when he told you he ain't love you who told you he cared me so what it's gonna be he's wrong for you and you know that I'm right he's a wankster baby the thug in your life someone you can understand why don't you take my hand He's wrong for you and you know that I'm right He's a wankster, baby, the thug in your life Someone you can understand Why don't you take my hand? Come on, and listen, baby It's hurting my heart for you Seems like you wanna take see you like my place You know what I'm saying? It's too pretty, man You, you don't gotta you deal with it girl, let's tie You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm knowing your situation I'm dealing with your situation your love is Because strong. I can't even get it I'm How long am I going to be the night. second man? You know, knowing that he's not the man that you want. I know he's not the man. You know, he called me up two in the morning and telling me he snatched you and he's beating you. You want me to come get you? Man. Yeah. So yeah, we back. Um, we did a little music break. You know, I threw a little bit of tracks on from uh, Blue Diaz from the new record we got. And I threw on um, something off the Mad Soul Mixtape Volume 2, Papa Dawn. You know what I'm saying? Come on and go with me. Shout out my dude Papa Don and shit. I used to work with him back in the days. Do some manage, manager video marketing and stuff with him and stuff like that. Um, but um, <clears throat> before I came to the show today, I was watching Chris Rock's show on Hulu, and he went in and he said a little couple things about. He said a lot of things actually, <laughs> <laughs> and um, you know, he was talking about a lot of different things, and he was talking about how. 
Um, one of the funny things that he said to me that I was laughing off of was when he was saying how uh, the Kardashian father he uh, helped Will. Uh, he helped. I mean, I'm talking about Will. He helped uh, OJ get off of this this uh, murder charge of of killing two women. I mean, two women, two white people, right? So he said God came down and told him, oh, since you want to help black people get off of killing two white people, oh, we're going to make sure that your children only fuck black men. And he was like, not the good black men. you going to fuck the crackheads, talking about Lamar Odom. He said, you're going to fuck the, the, the schizophrenic crazy motherfuckers, talking about Kanye West. Like, he was, he was going in, you know what I'm saying? He also said that the Kardashians, they, 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 they taking everybody. It's like whoever they want to deal with, like as long as you black, they're going to take you in. Like, oh, come on in. You know what I'm saying? We taking everybody. He also said that he spoke about the Will Smith shit and how he got smacked. And yo, yo, is what did he say about, what did he call it? He called it what? <clears throat> Something... Uh, the name of the Netflix special is um, Selective Outrage. So basically, he's, they saying that he selectively picked Chris Rock because he played Pookie as a crackhead in New Jack mm -hmm. City while Will Smith played Muhammad Ali. And he's a big six-foot-something strapping man. And he wanted to smack the shit out of Chris Rock. And he said, honestly, he said Jada Pinkin started that shit. Mm -hmm. He said that... Since he didn't want to resign from hosting the Oscars because they didn't nominate Will in that concussion whack movie, he's he called her a bitch. He said, this bitch wanted me to not host the Oscars because she said I didn't fall back from hosting it because they didn't nominate her husband for the concussion movie. He made a mistake first, and he said the, uh, the newest movie he got that's getting yeah. critically acclaimed, but... Cause Will Smith got a lot of good movies. Let's not take nothing, nothing away from him. Hundred <laughs> percent. Come on, like, let's let's keep it on it. Will Smith yeah, got a lot got of good, good fucking movies. movies. I good like movie. watching Will Smith on air. He's a dope ass fucking actor slash rapper. You know what I mean? But all throughout Chris Rock's joint, he was like throwing little shots at other rappers. He was like, I don't want to get no, I don't want to get no rappers mad. Mm -hmm. So he was like leading up into the last five minutes of his whole hour long Netflix show. About the Will Smith shit. So what he said about, he even said something about Jay-Z. He said something about a couple of rappers, but he was like, I don't want to get any rappers riled up. <laughs> but then when he finally got to the Will Smith part, he said he had select, selective um, outrage. outrage where he picked Chris Rock to slap as opposed to fucking up August Alcina for digging his wife's back out. And instead, he let his wife interview him on her show and say... So, yeah, I fucked our son's friend, and what do you think about it? And turned the mic to the people, like if it was Will Smith, and he was just sitting there angry, and he said, Chris Rock said that he understands that it wasn't about Chris Rock. He said he understands that it was about a whole bunch of other shit that was going on because there was, he said everybody in the industry was calling him a bitch and a bitch and a bitch for them. Because way before that Oscar thing happened and Chris Rock got slapped, People were already coming at Will Smith for sounding like a real sucker for letting Jada Pinkett fuck August Alcina and him not doing nothing about it. So what was he supposed to do? Block he, the dick from going in? He couldn't uh, have jump in before. Oh shit! Here we got we got is now. Like, talk what about was the, the guy exactly advocate. supposed to do to prevent his wife from fucking another man? He was supposed to either whip his ass or smack the shit out of. Yeah, her. but that's post. Dick entry. That's not pre. But still, right? all I, I right. Think, so a man finds his wife fucking a guy, and he comes in and kills both of them. Sometimes dudes get off from mental anguish, mental distress. So Will gets on a, a Facebook red table talk show, and Boogie Black was good. He gets on a red table talk show that's huge, mm -hmm. and he lets his wife explain how she had a let tank his wife. Let his wife Yeah he let her That's because her he show He could have easily stopped that And said listen honey I ain't doing no fuck shit like this When you fuck this young boy Our son's <laughs> friend And you parading him around All around the world Letting him dig your back out And you sucking his cock And now you want me on your show To talk about how I feel About you doing that What, what the fuck Would you have done some shit like that Well I don't know I, I guess 
It would depend <laughs> on what I was doing. If I was, you know, digging out I'm some sure young Will whatever, Smith then I would a lot play of girls hypocrite. In his time but also, I would say, if if the Red Table Talk Show is her show, if he knew ahead of time that it was going to be the topic of discussion, then yeah, maybe he probably could. So does that you not know. make him a sucker about doing? No, that shit? I don't think if he, it was sprung on him in the moment. And he just was there, then you know it is what it is. But if he knew ahead of time and he chose to go and sit down anyway, I don't think that makes him a sucker. I think it shows a little bit of courage, a little bit of bravery okay. to sit down there, know that your wife is going to ask these questions, and you still going to be able to keep your composure. It like it was talk a about what it was. She was like, well, when I had this do what it is, and he said, "You call it an entanglement? That's what you're calling it? Like they didn't pre come up with that." She said entanglement, and he was like, what do you mean entanglement? Mm -hmm. Is that what you call it, an entanglement? So mm -hmm. in my mind, I'm thinking, bitch, you sucking this nigga dick and fucking him <laughs> in all of these Four Seasons hotels and everywhere we going as a family. I'm going to the damn pool, and you let this nigga dig your back out in the bathroom while I'm out there, and he's there as Jaden's friend, <laughs> and you telling me it's an entanglement? No, bitch, you was cheating on me like crazy. But I'm sure... Will Smith probably fucked a couple of girls on her too because he was always a big star. If she was supposed to be mentoring him. See? You gotta, you gotta make sure you add the words. See? She was supposed to be mentoring. See, I'm not familiar with all of so the particulars. So she was mentoring his dick as well. Basically, because if she had him around and she started sleeping with him, and obviously she already looked at him from the very beginning and thought that he was a sexy, attractive young black man. Women know instantly. As soon as they see a motherfucker, they'll say in their mind, oh, I'll fuck him. <laughs> they know it. That's they know it, nigga. Ain't no, ain't no mishap in that shit. If it was the reverse and it was... Uh, if Will Smith was fucking Willow's, one of Willow's friends and had her and around they, and all and that, and he, they, it would be a whole Me Too movement against him. Facts. So that's why that's why it's not no right. He would because be canceled completely. He would be canceled. They, they canceled him for smacking her over being annoyed of... Of her fucking around on him with one of their child's friends. But if Will Smith smacked her. If he had sex with Willow's friend. Right. After her setting it up as if he was mentoring mentor. her in the business yes. and then turn around. He would have went down. And so. It would have been him okay. being a predator, yep. you know, yep. bringing her in to teach her the business and then using his power to take advantage exactly. of her sexually. And that shoe just ain't going to. But. In reverse, it's the female taking control of her bow, her power, her female power, her sexual That's power, and you know she's wielding it at her discretion. And good for her for. Being, now don't get it know, twisted. I love that. Will Smith movies and Jada Pinkett movies and all that. I just want to say that I do love y'all movies. Y'all got some really good movies, but that was some foul shit. And like you said, it was kind of brave. For them to put that out there because 100%. that kind of that kind of put them on front street so that everybody that would would have gossiped and on, said man. shit about it they already they, put it out there so nobody ever really came to they them. took advantage mm -hmm. of that story they used that so we gotta we gotta applaud them good. for that we definitely you know gotta applaud them we definitely and I don't see how they calling Will Smith for sucker you come up your wife fucked another dude you gonna come on her show and you gonna talk about it that's not cowardly to me that's bravery yeah you got a point there. See, that's what I like having extra sound mind persons here that can really like let me see things in another perspective and articulate it in a way to where I can really understand it as opposed to us debating back and forth. But I know for a fact that if my wife, I call her fucking somebody else, oh, I'm gonna practically kill you, bitch. Somebody said on the live, why did his wife go to jail? Why is it so easy for us as men to sleep? Yeah, under the rug. Because as men, we're supposed to be a lot tougher and we're supposed to be able to deal with shit. Just like, for instance, like we're out there working 24 seven, working hard to, to provide for the family while the mother's home supposed to be taking care of the family. But a lot of times the mother's home fucking the downstairs neighbor. And then they get away with it when pinning kids on motherfuckers. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And it's been like that for years. Since exactly. Since the wars, you know. I just seen, I just seen on something online that there's a whole bunch of dads out there that are not really the dads to a lot of kids, mm. especially out of Jamaica. There's a lot of fucking kids that think that the, somebody that there's that that's their, their dad is not their dad. I think that was happening with the World War II. Like 
Yeah. The wars and stuff like that. Yeah. Where all the men was going. Right. The wives were out there fucking these soldiers and then bringing that baby home to their husbands, making them husband believe that they were the fathers when they was really, the wives were out there whoring and fucking these soldiers. Mm. These strapping young soldiers that were fighting for the fucking <laughs> service. Well, I'm telling you, most of them were black. I'm telling you, there's a lot of black people that fucked a lot of these Europeans in these countries that they were in. They are fucking a lot of them, bro. For real. <laughs> and these women went home to their husbands, made their husbands believe that, oh, this is your child. The only way some husband was stopped at the gate was that that baby might have came out a totally different color from mm -hmm. them two. And they was like, hold up. Whoa. Thumb name right here. What's the, what's the TV show? Uh, the cartoon um, over um, The Hill. Starting oh, the hill? the hill? Oh, yeah, with the Indian kids yeah. and stuff? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, son, that shit real. know that that ain't his child. Right. And it's, it's the dude from off the block. Yeah, and he looked just like the dude. <laughs> exactly. King of the Hill. Yeah, King, King, of, the King Hill. of the Hill. But you know what's so crazy about that shit? I just went through that, man. Like, again, like I said it, and I say it a lot because I it's like therapy for me, so I kind of see why Will Smith did it. You know what I'm saying? And I empathize with him on that because... I talk about this shit because if I don't talk about it and I hold it in, it can affect me. It can affect my kidneys. It could affect a lot of organs in my body from me holding in some type of frustration about shit like that. But, yeah, my ex-wife pinned a child on me that I thought was mine for 26 years. Mm. And it really wasn't. So a lot of us get God out there. So I can sit on my podcast and talk about this shit, but I'm talking about it from experience. Mm -hmm. So I'm not just here fucking capping and telling y'all niggas. That's what right. it is I've been through it And I know And I understand the hurt So That's I kind of right. understand What Will Smith was going through And shit But at the same time You know If you ain't If you ain't do something To Jada or August Alcina about it To smack Chris Rock I think that was just Some whack shit You know what I'm saying It was a funny joke You laughed It was funny So when she gave you that look It wasn't about her Having alopecia Cause she ain't have alopecia When she was sucking August dick <laughs> <laughs> And you ain't care about that alopecia shit then when you was and well Tupac was before Will Smith so I can't mm -hmm. even really say nothing about that but they were fully married into their marriage for years mm -hmm. and and August Alcina came around as you know what I'm saying Jaden's friend and she was supposed to be mentoring him so you mentoring his cock all up in your ass and pussy and mouth as opposed to just mentoring him mentally. Because when I looked at him on that show, because it was a show with him and a couple of other people on there, like um, some shit with Dennis Rodman and all of them, one of them reality shows, he's definitely mentally, he definitely has something going on with him. You know what I'm saying? And mm. she took advantage of that. From seeing how he are and how he articulates, mm -hmm. it was easy for her to take advantage of him and manipulate his mind to do to be her little sex boy toy. Mm. It was easy for her to do that. From seeing how he reacted on that reality show, he's a very emotional young man. Okay. And it was easy for her to manipulate him. Manipulate him. him. You know what I'm saying? You say he's, she's a what? Yeah, yeah. He definitely. What's a bug he, out? Whatever he means, I know that's what it is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yo, Boogie, you know like, you wanna, we got a little bit of time up here. You, <laughs> you, you want to get Boogie up here and talk about the mag? Like, Because I'm in that shit. So I, wanna, I want you to get up here. You know what I mean? Let, let's talk about that, bro. You know what I mean? Let's get Boogie Black in this please. You know what I'm saying? Watch out for You know what to do. Now, nah, stay right there, Ice. Boogie Black, we're going to get yeah, Boogie in. Yeah, just make some space you know for him. You already know what it is. It's Boogie Black right here. You know what it do. You know what I'm saying? Not on you. Yeah. I wanted that with a, you know what I mean? So we got Boogie Black in the building too as well. Love when niggas pull up. Pull it up. Yo, 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 yo. What's the deal? What's the deal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, good to be here, Word of Armor. You already know. So Boogie Black is an artist that's, you know, S Street Media family. And right now you've been running around promoting a lot of different things that you got going on like i already was feeling your music already you got a single a and a b side and i fucks with it you know what i'm saying Bitch is lit. <laughs> you know what i'm saying and you gotta you know what i mean like i like what you're doing and appreciate it you know what i'm saying you, you now have a magazine out yes, you know yes. what i'm saying i'm looking at it right now it's looking it's looking pretty official you know what i'm saying Okay, okay, okay. Y'all can't fuck with me, no way. 
Yeah, we see it. We see it. Chris Rock. Chris Rock. We talking about Chris Rock earlier. Yeah, yeah. Quick, Chris Welch's is on the cover. You know what I'm saying? It's looking pretty lit in oh, here. You know, he told me. He told me talking about, talking about some. Hey, um, you gonna let me get that for free? Free, nigga. What? Yo, I already <laughs> hit you. When you posted this, did you not see me hit you up? And I was like, yeah. yo, send me the what? We got Cash App, nigga. I did Is this see my you copy? The Cash App. Nah, that's that's uh. Yeah, Okay, okay cool. all right, so I, I can hit you. With, hey, oh, you see what the F, baby? <laughs> baby, you see that? You see that? You know yeah. the vibes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm glad you pulled up today, man. Mm -hmm. time. We want to talk about this right here. Okay. The family, shout out the family vibes and all yes, that. Yes. Ground Hard TV podcast, the whole shit. What's the yeah. name of the magazine? The magazine is the Family Vibes Music Magazine. Okay. Yes, yes. You know what I'm saying? I got a whole little interview in here. World of Rama. Got the Groundhog TV podcast cover. S Street Media in the background. Ah. ABOQ Get the Money advertisement. Yo, yeah. okay, we lit it here. Facts. This is my magazine right here, baby. No way, you know it. You know what I'm saying? On the other side, we got KC. You know, it got to be that eye candy. So we, when we corner the market on all, on all of the jails and send it to them, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, them niggas, R.I.P. K. Slay. R.I.P. K. Slay. We know what your magazines did for all of the niggas that's locked down. Facts. But now, now, now we got the Family Vibes Music Magazine. We could definitely have the shorties in here. So shout out KC. Looking good, baby. Yeah, I to get and I can say that because, yeah, I'm a man. Married man now, but I can still send these books up. Nigga, you know you can't. Like you know you, know you can't. She hear that shit. She gonna be calling your phone. No, that's all good. I, no, I can send this to the to the. Ooh, look at that baby. Oh. <laughs> Did, I think I met her before, right? Hey, she man. was at an event or something like that, right? I think so. I she a singer? What's her deal? I, I um, think she well, a, a so y'all, if y'all want to know about her, just get the Family Vibes Music Magazine. It's a it's a it's a QR code on the joint, but they where can they find it at? Boogie, tell um, them. You can find it at actually go to uh, umadpublishing dot com, or you can just DM me for the information. And Hold I'll on, tell them, the, tell them, tell them so, again, mm, tell them again. All right, hey, y'all can go to um, www.madcloud or umag dot com <coughs> and find it there and look up the Family Vibes Music Magic Magazine. Or y'all can just DM me or DM um, Jerry Fontello for, at Fontello Studios on Instagram for the information. I heard of Fontello Studios before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they That's doing their things. Shout out Jerry and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Yes, yes. So you are actually the head person that takes care of all of this and stuff like that? Yeah. Actually, um, I just want him to actually do it. He's, he's trying to let me do the publishing as, as far as doing the book and all that, right. how to set it up. But I don't know how to do all that. So, I mean, look. I'm saying you could learn and do everything. Like, I ain't even going to front. I got too much going on. I can't learn. Yeah, I, mean, well, I could. I got too much going on, brother, you know. Tell everybody what you got going on, man. Let's go. We got, we got some time here. Let's go. All right. Well, shit. I got, um, I got another album coming out. It's called the um, Boogie Black Album Volume 2, The Impeccable Thoughts of Love. Produced by who? It's, it's mainly produced by um, Almighty Nate, um, JP Beats, um, and Dale. Shout out to India. It's um, also the producer Bass B that's on the magazine. He's he's on there. He's on there too. That's him right there. His name he, is Bass B. Yeah, his it was well, Sebastian. I call him Sebastian, but that's his name. But that's that's oh, you know what Bash I mean. Bass B. Oh, yeah. sure for Sebastian. He, he's, nah, you good. You good. He see um. He actually produced the song um, End of Both Worlds. Oh, okay. So, End of Both Worlds? What you mean? The, J the Jay Z and R. Kelly shit? Hell no. Um, <laughs> um, that's the best of both. Oh, yeah, that's the world. best of both. So I did the song to that. That's What's uh, the End of Both Worlds? After going off the best of both worlds, the song I did on the first. The okay, okay, okay. You know what I mean? So it's going off for that. And then, you know, um, I got shout out to Avia, the producer. I got him on it. Um, and then I'm also coming out with another album called Demon Time. Mm. So, yeah. like, explain that to me because you were like a younger rapper and stuff like that. So, explain to to the people what Demon Time means. Oh yeah. Um, before I must, before I want to explain that, I want to get to um my about my podcast. My podcast is called the Family Vibes Podcast Radio Show. Oh, besides okay. Besides the book, so it's going to actually be starting next week on March 11th. Okay. You know, and um, it's mainly produced my, by myself and Math. So, y'all check into it next week on Saturday. 
We will be live doing this and doing that. So now, what's the Family Vibes magazine about? I'm looking I was going to actually that? name it the Liddy God magazine, but I mean. <laughs> I mean so who, who made you, know, you do it the Family Vibes uh, joint? Shit. Uh, mommy, my mother, you know. She oh, said, okay. Yeah, that, that Liddy God, you you doing too much with that, boy. Go mm. ahead and change that. Your words change, you know. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. Might lose it. So I had to, um, you know, for, mom, for Mama Love, I had to change the name and made it the right. made it same thing. That's what's up, yeah, man. You, you know, we were talking about Chris Rock earlier, right? I know you heard that that joke about Chris Rock. He was saying how, you know, there's four ways to get attention, right? We're trying to get attention in mm-hmm. this world, right? right. And four ways, right? First way, you can show your ass. Mm-hmm. Easiest way, right? Best way, you know, quickest way. Second way, you can be infamous, you know, do something that, you know, did something. You Timothy McVeigh blew up some shit or whatever. Infamy, right? Third way was uh, uh, excellence, you know, do something excellent, right? I don't know, Carl Lewis or John Lewis or whatever, you know, excellence. Um, and the fourth way was, uh, it's escaping me, the fourth way, um, what he said, right? But it was, you know, I some sort of stature, mic. right? Oh, sorry about that. But the, uh, the easiest way was to show your ass. And then I open up this magazine and I'm just looking at an ass. Like is straight an ass on this cover. <laughs> so like I wonder if there's any talent around it. If you gotta show your ass, do you have a real talent? I mean, to be honest with you, that that's just the magazine. Isn't that it don't really mm-hmm. count as the person. That's mm-hmm. just, you know, the brand of the person, I guess. Okay. You okay. know, so uh, it don't I shouldn't really read into it. Well, you, you think it too much. That's okay. a, you know, okay. that's number five too. Y'all could put that as number five. <laughs> okay. Thinking, Thinking, you know. Right so right that's right another up. that's another situation as far as that. But you know, as far as those, you know, I, as far as those who are in the book, mm-hmm. you know, they do have talent. These are and, all artists, right? Yes, like a, and and that and them. especially Najus. I actually right. worked on a song with her. Najus. Mm-hmm. 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 Actually, did work on a song with her. It was actually called. What was it called? Nice. Drip, drip. DC native. But you know, Charlotte. shit didn't really get, you know, and then the the, really the, the the manage um the uh what you call them niggas that be doing that little engineering. Okay. Mm-hmm. So he didn't he trying to get more money out of everybody, trying to get more money out of me and her. You know, how you do the song. I'm real heavy in that book right there, boy. Yeah, he's heavy on the scene. Word up. Mm-hmm. Sure, you're looking a little smoky right here. Oh, yeah, I'm lit right there now. <laughs> we, we be up here sipping and shit like that. But, yo, just... <laughs> yo, I see the bottle. Yeah, <laughs> it's over. I'm, I'm, oh, it's Lord. finished. Yo, yo, so, 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 Boogie Black, like, tell everybody, like, where they could get the magazine and stuff like that at. All uh, right, once again, y'all can get the magazine. Y'all can actually, um... First of all, y'all can actually ask, go to my DM or DM me that, um... At Boogie Black... B O O G I E E Black, you know what I mean. That's my Instagram at Boogie Black, or all social media platforms. Or you could um um you could um talk to um Jerry Fontello at Fontello Studios. Or Actually, they can't talk to Jerry Fontello. They got to talk to you to get to Jerry Fontello. Well, shit, you could do either or. Got to mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. You, you the guy. You the guy. Yeah. You, you the guy taking. You the, yeah. You the guy in control of that. The way I see you out here moving with that. So I'm a, and I'm gonna go extra hard because. I'm all in that joint. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you already know. I'm going to go extra hard. So, and just so yeah, I, I want everybody to know out there that's listening on a live or whatever that's paying attention or going to see it on a rebroadcast, like Groundhog TV, we air every Sunday from 4.30 to 6.30, sometimes 5 to 7, you know, however we do it. Um, we, 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 we our own businessmen, so we can do things how we want to do them. You know what I'm saying? We also come on Anchor. I drop episodes on Anchor as well. Uh, and that also airs on Apple Podcasts. Castbox, Google Podcast, Overcast, Pocket Cast, Radio Public, Spotify, and Copy RSS. So we're on a lot of different platforms. So S Street Media, all of the ones I just named, and we're now every we are syndicated on three sixty five live every Sunday at I mean every Thursday at eight o'clock. So we're also on Live 365. You could go to Live365.com, and we're on that too as well at 8 o'clock on Thursdays. So aside from the podcast <clears throat> being on Instagram, S Street Media, Anchor, and all of Spotify and all of them other channels, we're also now on Live 365. You know what I mean? 
Okay. Um, okay. Live 365 and... Um, Every Thursday at 8 p.m. And we just got a lot of things going on. Aside from Groundhog TV being on uh, UBC TV Network, which is on Apple TV, Amazon Fire, uh, Roku, and uh, Glue TV, and a bunch of other platforms. Like, we out there, man. You know what I'm saying? So I just want y'all to pay attention. So when we big up brands and we big up people and coming on the platform, we got a lot of different platforms that we're on and we go, we coming on all over the world in a lot of different places. You know what I'm saying? So I know a lot of people, they're really focused on like the major platforms. So I name Spotify. So if all you people that's out there know about Spotify, you can catch us on Spotify. Grindhard TV podcast on Spotify. And everything else but... I think you guys would probably be just focused on the Spotify thing. So that's why, you know, you could go to Spotify and you could listen to Grindheart Audio and it would be Grindheart TV podcast on there. It's by World of Rama, the Hoff. Shout out to the Hoffs and everybody that's involved in everything that we do. Yes, yes. You know what I'm saying? So I appreciate the Family Vibes Music Magazine. Boogie Black, you are actually the creative director of this magazine. That's the position I just gave you because that's what you be doing. Yes, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate, appreciate me that. getting in this magazine through yes. you. <laughs> and yes, that's sir. a fact. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to, you know what I'm saying, Is is Now. That's right. You know what I'm saying? AKA Ice, AKA Economics Guy, and <laughs> about the business and stuff like that. Right Do you want to tell anybody anything about, you know, their taxes and doing their taxes? Because it is tax season. So I think you need well, to like start bigging that up. You know, uh, well, she, I don't know if we got a big up tax season, but definitely, you know, if April 15th is coming around, you did mention the quarters. I would say that we are in the third month of the first quarter, which will end March 31st, and you got to get your business taxes in um you know i i don't know you know you want to right we talk about it the estate and you know i manage some things and we got some stuff to do or whatever but you know i think our community is going to serve ourselves better when we learn how to use what's on the books to our advantage rather than railing against the things that you know maybe cause us challenge right mm-hmm so that's what I'm about. I'm about reading the information, using the statute to my advantage, structuring entities that allow us to, you know, take full advantage of tax avoidance. Tax avoidance isn't a crime. You right. know, dodging your taxes, not paying them, that's definitely a crime. But when but, you avoid them, like say, for instance, you got to get a... a, a more yeah, time you to set do up, it and stuff like no, that. No, not like delaying them. I'm talking about structuring your professional business entity, your LLC, your C, your S Corp, your, okay. your trust, your nonprofit, whatever it is. You structure it in a way that uh, positions your operation to avoid certain uh, tax burdens that are required on you by the federal government. Right. And, you know, understanding those nuances and applying them to your particular structure, whatever it is, a, a magazine, a publisher, as it were, or a, a media publisher, a digital publisher, or a production studio house, uh, or a distribution channel, um, you know, any of those things can be structured in a way that can, you know, bring you a little bit of a, you know, there's a saying, right? The fat, the best way to grow wealth is to, you know, decrease your tax burden. So I think that's that's a so good basically it's, it's basically saying you got to get a lot of write offs to decrease your well, tax burden. It's no other way, really, except mm-hmm. for having children. Well, How could you decrease your tax burden? Well, you're thinking. See, all due respect, you're thinking from a ten por- a ten forty perspective, right? right? Because most of us have been trained to be ten forty income earners, mm. right? But still, there are our self employed folks, and it's really our capital gains, our passive investors, and our business owners. They are not concerned about the earned income tax credit. You know, they're concerned about depreciation, which is a big thing. You know, thankful. Whichever way you go politically, you got to give Donald Trump a lot of credit if you're taking advantage of what he wrote into or what, you know, proponents of his legislation drafted so into law. Guy. I'm not a Biden guy. No way. Neither am I. I've never been a Biden guy. I, I think, you know, not to go too hard, but, you know, my black people, right? The prison industrial complex was 
directly built on the back of Joe Biden and Bill Clinton. Mm -hmm. So, and that decimated our community for generations. Why would I vote for that guy and think I'm going to get something different? Just because he's, what, pandering to me now? I didn't. And when you say that, you mean Joe Biden and Bill Clinton and the, the Democratic Party? Because black people are fooled to believe that the Democratic Party is really for them. When well, Democratic that, Party was the party that actually just wanted to keep slavery going for the free labor. Yeah. But at the same time, Reagan was a Republican, and he brought in crack in the crack era. In. Listen, it ain't Abraham no, Lincoln was a Republican, and right. he freed the slaves. Did he? Maybe. It was in, under his uh, administration that you know Helped. effectively civil. Uh, is that is that one of the reasons why he was question. assassinated? Oh, the, oh well, I mean, it I was talked think. about him being black. Yeah, he probably has well, some you black know, in him. You Babe never know. Ruth, another one with some. Actually, our grandmother, uh, her middle name comes from yeah, Babe no, Ruth. Yeah, yeah, will, yeah. So there so, was a story about no, that. I'm gonna that sell was, it right okay, now. Right. Um, for everybody that don't know, like. Is now is my blood cousin. Our mothers are sisters. But at the same time, what y'all didn't know is um, my last name is Bryant. And my grandmother's name was Helen Ruth Bryant. And the reason why her name was Helen Ruth Bryant, because her, her mother mm -hmm. was the chef mm -hmm. for Babe Ruth. His the, personal nutritionist. His personal nutritionist That's chef. Right. Yeah. My great grandmother was Babe Ruth's personal nutritionist chef. And That's when right. my grandmother was born, she gave her Babe Ruth's name as her middle name. That's so right. that's where Helen Ruth Bryant comes in. Now, it's also another well, twist to actually, that. Actually, just to sort of you know, add context. Well, to it the was fact Boston. It's Boston, right? It was and Helen was, Ruth Boston. That's right. And then my grandmother met our grandfather, who we spoke about earlier that's on, right. and that's where she got Helen Ruth Bryant because it was really Helen Ruth Boston. Boston. But another twist on that is that our grandfather, who you said was a German Jew, mm -hmm. when his mother great left, great grandfather, great no, our great our grandfather Julius. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah I'm with you. Mm -hmm. His mother mm -hmm. took her. He took his mother's husband's last name. Mm -hmm. So in all actuality, that Bryant name that we promote and go hard for, right. that's really not our last that's, name. That's not. Right. You know what I mean? So that's, you see how that can work? Yeah, brothers? Cousins. Cousins. Okay. I mean, yeah. That's my blood cousin, my first cousin. Yeah. So like we all could go. We have a lot of legacy going on with us that's really not even our legacy, mm -hmm. if you think about it. Because if my grandfather, who... Because, you know, women, they take the husband's name. So if the husband is running with a name that was from his stepfather, not even his real last name, mm -hmm. so how could you really... How do you really know what your name is? Or yeah. Is really, we would be what? Bostons. We would be Bostons. But we don't even know if from the lineage know. of that, if that's, that's really right. legitimate. Because yeah, we don't know where that right. came from. I uh, know. So there's so much stuff that went on during slavery... That's real. ...that we don't even know who we really are. Our identities is not really defined with anything because I go so hard with the Bryant family not and this with and that. Our names. Right, it's with our with names, something. right. That's just like on Roots when they was whipping fucking uh, Toby and they were like, oh, what's your name? Oh, Kunta. And they was like, what's your name? Mm -hmm. Toby. He didn't want to say Toby. He <laughs> yeah. wanted to keep Kunta. Mm -hmm. But that's just like me. I'm promoting Bryant and giving my last name to, to my wife. Mm -hmm. And that's not even truly my last name. Through generational separation and breakup through a bunch of things. That's right. Well, I mean, not to be funny, but at least I ain't got the last name like I got. What? <laughs> Come on now. Boogie Black? Yeah, my last name, brother. Your last name would be Black. <laughs> Let me tell you, brother, if you, whatever that last name is, if it represents your family and you got love there, then we honor that. Sprinkle? Represents the family. Sprinkle. Well, that's, that's a tough <laughs> yeah. one. Yo, guys, say your whole name, Boogie. Lavar William Ernest Sprinkle. Lavar William Ernest Sprinkle. Look at that. William Ernest. Wow. Sprinkle. Senior. Senior. I got a junior. There you go. Wow. Well, that's look. You know what? You got a name. You got a birth certificate. You have a life. That's true. And that's one of the things that we gotta really like say. Tell everybody, everybody where they can find you at and about your new music and all that. Cause we about to end the show. All right. We I can find my new music. On Boogie Black Streaming on all platforms I already got um, The album out It's been out since September Go and cop that It's online Streaming everywhere 
And also, like I said, I'm coming out. I'm coming out with that with another album. It's called the Boogie Black Album Volume Two: mm-hmm. The Impeccable Thoughts of Love. So y'all go ahead and check that out in the summertime, and in December, I'm coming out with the um, Demon Time album. So check into that too. Tell them about the magazine again, real quick. The Family and Vibes. If, and if anybody is actually interested, please, the prices and the information is right here. On this, on the last page. Mm-hmm. All right. So, if anybody is interested in being part of the magazine, please hit me up on my IG. Once again, Boogie Black at B O O G I E E Black. Once again, B O O G I E E Black. That's right. And we gonna help you promote the magazine. So, shout out Jerry Fontello. I seen him in the black. I seen him in the back as a young black brother doing his thing. And, so. where, and then think about it Where this black motherfucker Get the name Fontello from So you already know Like that That's another little issue Right hey, there look, where, Hey look you here know I, mean? you know I got like my that. name right. Hey I, I mean? got my name You know everybody keeps saying That we are Irish look, And Does this guy look um, like a Fontello? Fontello Not at all So you know Throughout the lineages Of him yeah. Somebody was You know some, Something happened Something happened And that's it was a fact. You know what I mean It was mixed some up In some kind of way yeah. There's people that keep saying That I'm white And I'm half white And all this well, I know your white ancestors or your white people will see you and they be like, How the fuck? <laughs> they be like, You the know, fuck? there's a white there's a white um there's a white um pianist that was called Leopold Sprinkle. Mm. Oh, well you do your research, you might have some history in that right there. I, I, but you I'm gotta gotcha, remember bro. a lot of us could have mm. been married into something and not really have that bloodline. You feel what I'm saying? Right. Because I thought I was related to Kobe Bryant due to that last name, but look, my grandfather took his Stepfather's last name And passed it on down To a whole generation of us mm-hmm. And that's really not Our last name You know I thought I was related To Larry Sprinkle The weather guy In um, Charlotte I would have actually been uh, a, ga- a Gash My mom's told me My father's name was Gash Gash? Yeah Because I don't know my father So she just told me What name it is And how do I know She telling the truth But you know what I mean? That's my mom's And I love her <laughs> Yo Is now You got anything You want to say Before we get out of here? No, nah, it was good to be here. Good to meet you, brother. Good to meet yeah. you too, brother. Um, you know, we out here, right? Get educated. Economics is the, in my opinion, the true road to our salvation as a community mm-hmm. out here in America, more than anything else. So get with it. Inform yourselves. Educate yourselves. Um, Isaiah is now. You can call me is now. You know me as Ice back in the days. Is universal light. You can find me on Isaiah underscore is underscore now at IG or is power now dot TV. And, uh, you know, we out here trying to share information and let people know economics. Look at the true numbers, right? Social welfare, red line and all of these things, affirmative action. All of these things have debilitated our community. We got to get back to black excellence. We got to get back to determining our true value based on our creative, our intellectual and our spiritual prowess and take advantage of that, monetize that, use it to our benefit, stick together. And we'll that's find our fact. way. So look, that's what it is. We out of here. It's Groundhog TV podcast every Sunday. You already know what it is. SG Media. We'll be back next week. You already know. Groundhog. Grr.